Welcome back to The Big Build. And in this episode, we're going to be laying our structural floor deck ready for us to work on to build the roofs. Now, one big advance in construction in the last 20 years was the manufacturers of P5 chipboard came up with ways of the flooring being put in before the roof was on. And they did this by having a protective film or a coating on top of the boards and using a really good expanding PU adhesive to bond everything together and give you a, basically a waterproof joint that will allow the floor to be laid and exposed for up to 60 days if you fitted it in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Now, if you want to see an in-depth video of that, have a look in the channel because I've done a whole video on how to fit Ega Protect P5. That's the flooring I'm putting down on our floor here. We have the luxury of this rain cover, mostly over the building. It's only over one elevation on the rear extension, the new extension, that we haven't got so much cover. And obviously, we will have the benefit of the flooring in that position. We still use Ega Protect because you can clean it easily. You know, when the plasterers have been in, you can scrape it, you can mop it, you can do everything. It's not got a film on, it's a coating, so it's really good. There's two ways of fixing it. You can use one with more mechanical fixings and the adhesive, and you can use one which has got less mechanical fixings and the adhesive. Now, the benefit is the less penetrations in the board if you're exposed to the weather. I know you can tape them and you can put a bit of glue over them to stop the moisture going in, the better. And the glue is super strong. You just cut the tops off, you use a six mil bead and you keep it roughly 10 millimeters in two beads next, you know, on each of the joists. So you have two everywhere. And when you bed it down, it goes off really nice and solid. It, it, it actually swells up, expands and takes up the small undulations that you find in any timber product. So we're gonna get on now and fix all of this. We've got four floors effectively now. We've got the new extension over there, which is a bathroom. You can use this in a bathroom as well, and you can tile on it, which is really good. Uh, you haven't got to apply it or anything like that. You, when we've got this main bedroom floor, which comes around the stairwell, and then we've got what is the study floor, upstairs study floor, and then we've got another bedroom over here. Now, what, why we can't floor all the way through is because my roof structure relies on some quite heavy trusses which pick up my ridges that come through. They go right down onto the, onto the wall beneath me, so my floor will come in either side. So what we'll do for now is we'll treat this section as one floor, this section as another floor, because we need to then cut out the slot for that truss to drop into. We've got the same happening at the other end. I'll just take you around there. We've got the same happening at the other end. I'll point it out for you. Okay, so between this bathroom and this bedroom, we've got another big truss which sets in here. This is a four ply, which means it's four trusses together, catches the end of a big lattice ridge here, and it also catches a beam for this small gable roof there. So it's one floor there, one floor here, another one over there, so it's effectively four floors. And all that means is, the difference it means is, is that there'll be a break when those trusses come in and then we put a timber either side and fix those cut floors in. So this is actually gonna make the job a little bit easier for us. If we were doing this in one, then if you can imagine, we've got like five or, five or six boards long this way by 11. So there's about 70 sheets here. Um, but now we can break it up, make it a bit quicker. I can't wait to get it done because once you've got that lovely platform to work on, it's amazing really and it's going to look brilliant okay so we're going to crack on we've got all the material down there we're going to start bringing it up gluing it on and getting it fixed
So you saw in that little time lapse there how straightforward it is to get going on a floor like this. Um, and as I mentioned previously, if you didn't quite get it, there's a massive girder truss which fits in between here down onto the walls. That's why this section of floor is a big square. Then we've got the change of direction which we're working on now where the joists change direction. You can just see Ed and Andy pulling a string line through for the glue. We always ping a line down so we don't over glue every course. Doesn't take a minute, but at least it keeps things nice and tidy. Where we've got this triple ply here, this beam, in the last video, if you saw when we were putting the joists in, I spoke about letting in the hangers. So those are the hangers there that are let in. And you can imagine if you didn't let those in, when you get your flooring running over the top, which is effectively hard on the joist there, you can see that these nails and hangers are going to cause issues, they're going to hold them up. So I just simply routed those out, so therefore they're all below the line of this three ply there. And when we put the glue on, everything will be nice and flat, and it's just a really nice job. So what we'll do around the stairwell, although we know roughly where the staircase will finish here, we're going to end up flying the boards over a little bit, so we've got some tolerance to cut them back. This side is a given. This side here on the end we'll go flush with. That side over there we go flush with because that's a given. The stairs are effectively against those two walls. But on this side here, on, on here going through there, I'll probably hang them over a little bit just in case we need to retrim to match the staircase width. And also on the other end here, we'll oversail a bit in case we need a bit of adjustment on the nose inside. We can always cut it back afterwards. So we're going to get this end finished now. More, mate. And now again. Here we are. Yeah, it's lovely. So it's just a matter of carrying on, working through. As I say, a lot of my jobs, I like to make sure that all the joints land on a joist where possible. Can't always happen. This whole run here, I managed to get it to work, which is really nice. Um, but if you're at 400 centers and you're using 22 mil, then you can have the boards join with the glue in between the joists. If you're using 18 mil at 400 centers or 22 mil at 600 centers, then it's worth putting the small H frame of noggins underneath because on some sites like the NHBC, it is basically what you have to do. But in this instance, because we've got the joints of the board with the joists here, you can see that coming through. We've got the luxury of not having to do that, which is, which is brilliant, I always think. Anyway, so we're going to get on now, get a few more sheets down, nearly the end of the day. Tomorrow we'll get all this finished. And well, as you can see, it's just a luxury to have something really nice to work on and walk on.
So that basically finishes up the flooring. So it's really nice using a system like Egger Protect where I can put my whole deck down, come rain or shine, and work from it. So for me now, to construct the roof over the top of this is an absolute dream. Now, I've got these channels which I've got to leave out here. So for example here, I've got a three-ply truss that I'm having made, and it goes from the wall plate to the party wall, or the central spine wall in the middle, and it holds the end of my ridge beams. Now my ridge beams are a lattice beam, they're quite tall, these ones are 1.2 meters tall, and they span quite a distance. So on the opposite end of this beam, it will stand on the top of the truss, and it will travel out to a timber frame gable in wall, which we'll be constructing in 200 by 50, 8 by 2 in Imperial, and that will have the end of the truss on this end. We've got the same going on the other end. So this is a gable here, and the ridge travels all the way through the length of this part of the building to the same gable on this end, which catches the lattice beam that travels from there to here. And then we have a complete change of direction with the ridge then traveling centrally through this portion. So we'll have a big pair of valleys. They'll come all the way down to this point here is exactly where the valley rafter intersects here. So it's from this point here all the way up to its opposite on this side to here. And then this part of the roof here is an oak frame which sits down on top of these saddle stones that we've got down there. So it's nice, a, a nice view from here. We've actually removed some of the terrace paving. We dug um, a metre deep foundations. We concreted them in and you can see that we've, we're setting these saddle stones in into the paving. And then we've got the oak posts, the oak head, the oak return, and that'll be where the roof joins. Then we've got a wall here, which is this basically this outside wall carries, picks up the roof structure at this point, carries them all the way up. And so that is a really nice place to get to. I love it when we got this to this stage because you can see we've got a big working platform. It's nice and safe. We're just going to make up a balustrade, sort of like a safety rail there for when we start working on the roof. And we've just got some of the old joists. We're going to rip them down and we're gonna make something up for there. What with the price of timber, let's reuse something. So that's it. We are just about to embark on what's probably the best part of the job for me. This is where I get to make my roof. And I'm gonna do probably several small videos as well, along with the episodes on kind of like roof construction in general. So every time I get a new frame, I might film the working out of that frame using my metric roofing square and my app, which um, is, is great actually, it, it makes things really straightforward and easy. I've also got some carpenters joining us for what is uh, some test driving of the square as well. We've got some guys who are coming in who've been in touch with me and said they'd like to spend a day or two with me and they're going to come along as well to help out and also test drive the square. So it should be quite good fun. Anyway, thanks for joining me on The Big Build. I'm Robin Clevett. I'll see you all again soon.